Well, I think it's about time I make a long, in-depth update video for all my YouTubers since I've been quite busy this summer, a lot busier than I expected. Um, and just kind of give you guys an overview of what's going on around my house right now and uh, some updates for the future and things like that. Um, I know you guys have been excited to see the 316 and all you guys like the 210 because I've had that thing the longest. So just make a quick video on them and some other things going on. Um, but here's first since I really haven't, since most of the videos I shot of this tractor have been from, you know, sitting on the seat actually putting it to work, I thought I'd do like a, a walk around video of it. Uh, so you guys can see the whole thing uh, and as you can see I've been keeping it real nice and clean and, and trying to preserve the paint job as nice as I can um, this guy that I bought it from did a real nice real really nice paint job you know airbrush job and everything I don't think he used any clear coat but I think he used that that John or that Vosper uh, paint hardener stuff which is what all the, the guys prefer to use when they do a professional paint job and uh, I mean, it turned out really, really nice. So I just, when I, when we got to this guy's farm down in Maryland, or, well, no, it was in Pennsylvania, but we actually drove, we spent more time driving through Maryland um, to come back up into Pennsylvania. But uh, when we got to this guy's farm and he opened up the door to his shop, he had a, he had a 330 and a 332 sitting there in the, in the middle. He had a 318 in the corner under cover, and then he had this 316 uh, off to the side. And I looked at this thing. I, I could not believe how sh how shiny it was. It, it was like it would never been out of the shop since he uh, since he got it redone and put back together. And I thought my paint job on the two ten was half decent, but man, was I wrong. <laughs> um, and I just you know I pulled it out of there, and it wasn't too dusty, so I could tell he kept it clean and everything. It was you know just giving it a couple test runs and stuff to make sure everything worked okay and then as soon as I got it home I drove it around a little bit to get used to the controls and then I put it right to work and that day she got dirty and dusty and everything and this is my main mowing tractor now and I just I feel really bad to um you know to use this thing and scratch up the new paint job but I'm doing the best I can to not be you know, irresponsible and you know try and take as best care of it as I can and unfortunately, I have gotten some scratches and stuff in it. I mean, you can see there's some little, you know, nicks and stuff. And the one big thing uh, that I feel really stupid about, there's a, I don't know if you can see, there's a, I put a pretty nice size scratch in the hood there. I don't know if you can see that. I, uh, because with, with the way these are set up, you basically have, there you go, you can see right there. You basically have to swing your leg up and over the hood. And I was wearing my Timberlands one day and, had to get off and long story short I ended up putting that nice scratch in the hood so I was kind of pissed about that and then you know just little cosmetic stuff like this is for me brushing up against trees and stuff but from you know you don't have to back too far away to realize that it's still a really nice paint job in the end he said he had over $2,500 worth of new parts into this tractor and I pretty much believe it I mean I don't think the paint job was all that but um, I mean new spindles or uh, rebuilt spindles on the deck. They're nice and quiet. Deck deck works really good. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, let's see, what else? I think he might have done a little work to the front mule drive here. Uh, these are fairly expensive. I mean, you can see mine. Actually, the first time I used it, I hadn't tightened the knob down and the knob fell off. But my uncle said, here, just do what I did. Use a bolt. So that's what I did. I stuck a bolt in there and used that to tighten it. Um, he also replaced the grill and the grill emblem, which are, uh, really make a nice touch. Uh, new decals, even the fender decal too, he went that far too. Um, as you can see here, one thing I really, I think he did a nice job on, he uh, removed the sandpaper foot grips and he took some quarter inch diamond plate steel and cut it and riveted it on there and I think it looks really cool. I. I've seen a couple tractors like that before. I thought, eh, that, that's kind of neat. Maybe I'll consider that. And then I saw this track, and I was like, wow, that looks really sharp. So as you can see over there, I actually bought, I actually bought myself another sheet of, and I'm going to get around to doing that on a 210. I sand it off. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but I plan to do that in the future. Uh, let's see what else. New uh, orange knob for the hydro lever. And under this cover, 
you probably won't be able to tell, but it's got a brand new seat too. And those seats ain't cheap either. They're not as high of quality as the original seats are. Um, they use like a cheap aluminum pan and everything, but you know, when you're restoring a tractor, it adds a nice touch. On this tractor, all I did was order a $70 um, foam recover kit, which just, it's just new foam. I repainted the back of the seat, the original seat pan, um, but this one is an entirely new seat, and uh, it's, you know, I'm trying to preserve it, so I swapped my seat cover over to this one, because this, this tractor is getting a lot more seat time now. Um, I, I ordered a, a new Kelch uh, fuel gauge for it, because the float on the old gauge was cracked, so the, that little plastic float would just sit at the bottom the whole time and it filled with fuel. So it said it would, so all the time it would say that it was empty. Um, and unfortunately, this, these aren't of high quality either because these don't give you an accurate reading either. Once the float hits the bottom, it acts like it's empty, but I have probably half a tank left. Uh, a couple other things uh, new reflectors and the, the little lenses that go around them. Um, because this is, because the 316 Odin is an economy version of the 318, um, they, they removed some of the features, I mean, uh, other than that, people really don't realize that this is basically a 318, they just removed, like I said, they removed some features, like the, the biggest thing was probably, um, the H2 hydraulics, uh, the 318 had two valves, uh, two spool hydraulics, whatever you want to call them, the 316 only had one valve, they call this H1, um, uses a smaller valve, uh, but the, the thing I like about it is that, you know, there's less uh, plumbing for lines and stuff that have to go in it. I don't know if you can see this. The valve is right down there. Um, there's The advantage to having H1 is, you know, there's less lines running everywhere. There's less lines that can leak. Um, and with that, they also gave you hydraulic couplers up front, too. This, because this is H1, it only has a set here, but not a set here. Um... But I haven't had to use the front hydraulics yet. I plan to get a 54 blade um, for this tractor so I can plow snow with it. Because after last winter with the 210, I'm kind of iffy about using that one to plow snow again. Um, but, yeah, I'm looking for a 54 blade pretty soon before winter comes. But, yeah, you have the 318 has two sets of couplers up front. But you just have one set of lines going up there and back with the H1 system and that's good because you have more hydraulic pressure um, well you don't without the H2 you don't have power steering you see it has this gigantic steering arm which actually in my opinion steers a little easier than the um, the power steering on the 318 and with the 318 and the 322 and all those with the cylinder mounts to the frame right about here a lot of times the frame cracks right there so having this manual steering setup is actually it's a lot less hardware and it's um, you know, less hydraulic pressure that can leak and can crack the frame and stuff like that. And in my opinion, it steers a lot easier. I mean, you can't you can't spin it with one finger from a stop, but I don't see why you really need to do that. Um, so I'm happy with it. It's got a real nice steering setup. It's greasable. It's got the heavy duty steering knuckle and everything. Um, I put my little spinner knob on it from the 210, so my left hand stays on the spinner, and my right hand stays on the hydro. Um, but aside from that. And the extra hydraulics, uh, the tail lights, like I said earlier, or the, the reflectors, whatever you want to call them. Um, 318 had true tail lights. This one just has reflectors. Um, I'm thinking about swapping the tail lights from the 210 over because um, this one could actually use them. This one, I really don't think I need them. And uh, this tractor doesn't hold the charge very well, so there's no need to run tail lights because that'll just drain the battery. Um, and then one other thing, the 318 had individual turning brakes like a farm tractor. They used mechanical drum brakes, and this, uh, on the 316, they cheapened that up by just making one lever to, or one pedal to control both brakes. And uh, I actually, I do use the turning brakes a lot, believe it or not. Most people use them for limited slip. You know, you get stuck in a hole, your one wheel spin, and you can, you can transfer the power to the other wheel like on a farm tractor. But I actually do make a lot of sharp turns with this, so I do use the pedal a lot. And... It does, if you don't press the pedal all the way and you make a nice slow turn, it actually does turn pretty sharp with one pedal. So, um, you know, I don't really need a, th a 318. I don't need all those features on the 318. The 316 is just fine. But the only thing I'd upgrade to make it more like a 318 is the, the dual pedals. Because um, I actually do, my uncle and I both use the turning brakes a lot. Um, so, and then here's a quick look under the hood. 
The, this 316, unlike many of them, was equipped with an hour meter, because uh, this is a slightly later one. I don't know if they made these a stock um, piece of equipment eventually, but the earlier ones didn't have an hour meter. But I'm, luckily this one does, because on a unit like this that's built for a lot of abuse, it's good to keep track of hours. They really should have put these in them from the start. Um, it had 1,093 hours when I got it, and look how many it has now. So that's just a 1,221 and a half. Focus, focus. So that's just to give you an idea of how much I use this. And the hour meter still works, still ticks away. Um, and this, the motor runs really good. It's an Onan P218G, which is, in my opinion, one of the best small gas engines made. People have a love-hate relationship with these Onan motors because a lot of times people don't know how to take care of these things. They use them in, I mean, John Deere used them, Case used them, Cup Cadet used them. Uh, Sears used them and you know these are very hard working motors they're horizontal opposed twins so you have one piston going that way and one piston going this way um, and because of that it's a horizontal shaft so you have a drive shaft that's one of the other reasons I wanted a 300 series because you have they have a shaft driven transmission I'm not sure if you can see that down there but they use a heavy duty transmission with U-joints and everything Darn, I really don't think you can see that um, not a cheap little aluminum dry shaft like my grandfather's cup that uses. Uh, this has greasable U-joints and everything. It's it's uh, real heavy duty, you know, no dry belt problems to mess with unlike that one there. Um, and, you know, constant power to the transmission. Um, I'll get to that in a second, but this is actually the same motor that's used in the 318. In the later years of the 316, they just, for, for whatever reason, they decided, oh, let's just quit using the 16-horse motor, and we'll just give it the same motor as the 318. So, really, it's a 316 with an 18-horse Onan. Um, the very early ones, this confuses a lot of people, but the very early 316s that were made in the late 70s were just a renumbered 300 with the H2 hydraulics and the, t the turning brakes and the 16-horse Kohler. Um, and then a few years later, once they came out with the 318, they made an economy version of the 318 and called it the 316. And at that time, it had the uh, the B43E Onan, which is the B-series 16 horsepower with no oil filter. Um, and then around 87 or 88, when they when they re, uh, when they sort of renovated the 300 series, they gave both tractors the P218 motor, which was 18 horsepower. Um, electronic ignition or solid state ignition whatever you want to call it no breaker points you know after after messing with this thing I'm kind of sick of breaker points and condenser I just don't they're easy to fix but I just have bad luck with them I don't know why um, but with 1200 hours on it this thing doesn't burn a drop of oil it uses a little bit of oil but it doesn't smoke it smokes a little on startup but that's typical um, usually once they get these higher hours, people, like I said, don't know how to take care of them. They start burning oil, they start smoking, um, and then people don't know how to, you know, a lot of times people complain because these things overheat, they run hot, um, and because of the way these are set up, if you look underneath here, I'm not sure if you can see this, there's a belly screen under the frame there. It's, it's a vented screen, and because the flywheel faces the rear on this tractor, it has to, um, it sucks all its cool air in from under the under the frame here it sucks it in through that belly pan and what people don't realize is because that's right uh, behind the front tires and right above the mower deck there's always grass and debris flying up in there um, and a lot of times if you're going through dry grass or something the wheel the front wheels are spinning and kicking up dust if the motor's running it just kicks it right into the it sucks right into the vent um, that was one of the only major design flaws they had with these tractors is the cooling systems because they're very narrow I mean, all the John Deere's back then were narrow like that, but they were very uh, tight and, and compressed inside. There's just enough room with the side panels on, but they designed it so if you run wide open throttle, you get as much you get as much suction, you know, as much vacuum of air through there as you can. And with these Onan motors, they don't like their heat, um, so you keep the right weight oil in them. And every once in a while, what I have to do is maybe like once a month, I take these side panels off. Um, it's, little different actually you take out this 10 millimeter bolt and then you go you take the grill off and you can there's two half inch bolts here on the back of this hood support it's a bit of a funny design but you have to you have to use metric and normal standard sockets to take the side panels off I take the panels off 
Um, sometimes I take the hood support off. I go in there with a vacuum. I suck all the grass and stuff out that gets caked up under here. And I go underneath and suck up all the grass that gets stuck in the belly screen and around the flywheel and everything. And around the frame under the motor and everything. And that's, that's you know, that's how these things stay cool. That's how they live the longest. People don't realize that. They, they let them build up and build up and build up with grass. The grass gets sucked into the cooling fins in the motor and creates heat. And over time... The owners throw their valve seats. Usually that's what they're known for. They, they throw the valve seats out and obviously they can't run as a result of that. And that's because people, they're too careless to, you know, clean them out every once in a while and get the grass out of there. Stuff that makes them overheat. One other thing that they um, had to put under these tight hoods is a, is a firewall foam. Uh, this is actually the original firewall foam. And I'm that it, that's a sign that this tractor was well taken care of because... Probably 90% of the 300 series you see used or even restored sometimes too if they didn't do a good restoration on them. Um, most of them don't have the firewall foam. This stuff, you know, wears down easily. But after 1,200 hours of use, this thing is still there. I mean, it, it was actually a lot cleaner than this um, when I got the tractor. It's just a little rough from the hood pinching it and stuff around the edges. But um, so to see this tractor with the original, you know, the thick firewall foam in it to keep, you know, it goes all the way down and keeps grass and stuff from getting sucked into the flywheel. It goes all the way down to the flywheel. Um, but, you know, that's a sign that this tractor was really well taken care of. So that's why I got a good deal on it for 1400 bucks. I mean, the guy lost a bit of a profit on it. I, I felt bad for him, but, uh, you know, I got a good tractor. I was never going to find another own and power 300 series for that kind of money in this good of shape too, this original condition. Um, and this is a 1987 model. It's an early 87 model. And after doing a little research and talking with friends of mine and people I know, uh, most people will tell you that the 87 to 88 models were the best because they used the new style motor, but it was before they, you know, uh, used different uh, linkage for the, the hydro lever because uh, sometimes they were rough to control. Sometimes they were smooth. This one's pretty smooth. Uh, and it was also before they switched from lead paint to the powder coat, which... If any of you guys see the older 300 series with the the, the paint turns like a, a pine green color or it starts to chip and rust underneath, that's the powder coat. And that John Deere uh, engineers were not very bright to start using that stuff because that's a very cheap quality stuff. Um, so this was the last year before they started powder coating them. They used lead paint. And I mean, this was repainted, so I don't have to worry about that. But, um, you know, it could have been all... Uh, rotted away and everything beforehand so luckily it wasn't you know did a real nice made a real nice finish um, I'm trying to think of what else one other thing uh, show you under there it's got a peerless 2600 shaft driven like I said earlier shaft driven garden tractor transaxle which is real heavy duty these things are built for pulling and hauling heavy loads uh, the lighting is kind of crappy down there but you get the idea on the side there, it actually says Peerless Division of Tecumseh, which is funny because Tecumseh engines are junk. Um, and most people will agree with me on that. Uh, they build pretty good transmissions, though. The 210 has a Peerless 2300, 316 has a 2600, shaft driven versus belt driven, you know, gear drive, you know, etc. Um, and yeah, these things can, they're built to pull heavy loads and uh, change the oil every once in a blue moon. Um, you know, these are very heavy duty, as long as they don't leak. The problem with this is the input steel where the drive shaft goes in does have a bit of a leak. And the guy told me about that. You can see that little spot down there. The guy did tell me that over the phone when I first talked to him about it. I said, oh, that can't be too bad. But I found out it wasn't an axle seal. So to fix that, you have to take the drive shaft out and fix the seal and put it back in. And right now, since I really need this thing, I really don't care to fix that. I mean, it's just a little leak. I'm going to try and run some of that that automatic transmission sealer fluid through it. We'll see how that does it. Um, but, yeah, 46 inch deck. Good, uh, you know, good, very heavy duty deck. One of the three sizes you could get with these tractors and uh, the most, definitely the most common. These are good for, you know, if you keep the blade sharp, they do a really nice job cutting uh, lawns like I do. I, I mow, you know, seven or eight lawns, sometimes even more. Um, I mow a lot of brush with it too. The 46-inch decks do the best job of mowing brush, um, and it was in real good shape, like I said earlier. So 
Let's start this thing up. I'll show you guys how easy this thing starts. It's funny because once it warms up, it's actually harder to start, but all the onions are like that. Oh, yeah. Starter likes to miss sometimes, too. <laughs> the battery light's a little funny, too. Sometimes it goes on, and sometimes it kicks back out. Uh, it, it flickers a lot, too, but... I think it might be a loose connection or something. It's probably the, the negative battery cable. Because you can see I replaced this, uh, I replaced this connector here for the positive, but not for the negative. So whatever. That interstate battery is really good. I have one in the 210 as well. We'll pull her outside real quick. Steered really easily, especially when you keep everything greased. But even when it's not lubricated, it still works nicely. Does sometimes the transmission likes to creep? That's just a, uh, one of the perks of these hand hydros. But all you have to do is pop it into forward and then pop it out again. So. Muffler's hardly even rusted too, which is great for the amount of hours. I don't think it was replaced, because like I said, this thing's been real well taken care of. These mufflers do tend to rot out pretty quickly. Um, this had those Goodyear tires, those old style Goodyear tires on it. Uh, and probably a week or so after I got this tractor home, the one tire got an air bubble in it, and or the tube got, they had the inner tubes in them. One of the tubes got an air bubble in it and exploded and the tire uh, unfortunately went with it. So I took that off and I got one of these cheap tractor supply Chinese knockoff tires. And then about two or three weeks ago actually, the other tire uh, developed the leak and uh, I figured yeah, I might as well replace that too. And I actually met up with my friend Jimmy, John Deere 318 guy and uh, DJ, uh, JD Gators, or JD Gator, I mean, uh, we actually met up. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. Uh, but Jimmy had an extra rim and a tire and everything, these Carlisle Turf Master tires, and uh, they swapped that on there for me, so it works fine. One day I'll get the four ply, the you know, heavy duty four ply tires on it, um, but for right now, that, that's good enough for me. I mean, this tractor runs like a top. Normally I don't like to rev these things up when they're cold, but I mean this tractor's worked its ass off the past two days, so it's been running a lot. Um, but you know, these tractors are built to work and I need one that could work and not complain, so I'm gonna let you guys hear this thing when she opens up. These things sound like little farm tractors under a load too once you really get them revved up, which is great. goes off but in a little bit it will probably come back on again it's just temperamental like that Those are, uh, 
The uh, opposed twin engines really have a nice sound to them. It's a shame the EPA outlawed them because of the emissions, but you know that's understandable. I think it was they. I think they uh, sold replacement Linamar engines for owning up until around 2000 or 2001. That's what my uncle put in his 318. It's the same motor as this. It's just rebadged. I did have a little bit of a problem with the with, uh, with the little oil leak. I found out it was the um, the little oil pressure sensor. It's, it threads into the block on this side next to the oil filter. When the sensor goes bad, um, it just leaks oil. So I took I took the cooling fin off of the motor on that side. I took the old sensor out, put a new one on, and it works fine. Thanks to uh, Weekend Freedom Machines and my tractor form, I know people who work on owning engines and they specialize in parts for these old motors that they don't make anymore. And I emailed one of them, a guy by the name of Boomer, that's his sales name. Uh, he got me the part real cheap, cheaper than what John Deere wanted for it. I, I probably won't even go to John Deere for any owning parts, but I went to this guy Boomer and he got me the part for a very affordable price. So, slapped it on there and I haven't had a problem with it since. Um, This tractor is in very nice shape. There were a couple dumb little things that the guy never really paid attention to when he restored it, but it was mainly a cosmetic restoration. I mean, this tractor is in such good mechanical shape that it didn't need any mechanical work. Um, but, I mean, there are some little things that, I mean, they don't really bother me that much. Um, the biggest things, or well, the two major things really are the, um, the hydro input seal for the drive shaft. Because, like I said earlier, that leaks a little bit of oil when it sits for a while. Just have to replace that seal. And the other major problem is this this motor has a plastic... Um, like I explained in one of my last videos, this motor has the plastic flyball spacer on the governor. And once it warms up, the, the sometimes the plastic spacer likes to spin by itself. Um, and what that does is it controls the opening and closing of the governor. controls how much fuel goes in and out. Uh, so when the gear spins by itself... I'll try and give you an idea you have the flywheel back here and right above it is the fly ball spacer for the governor or for the governor um, inlet whatever you want to call it and when that plastic gear wears and it starts to spin by itself it can open and close the governor on its own so I'll be you know mowing a field or something and I'll be running wide open throttle and all of a sudden it'll rev up to beyond wide open it'll run you know a much higher rpm so I have to be careful then I just resort to I'm usually moving down to about half throttle to get it to the right RPM range, but you just have to be careful for that. And the way to fix that is uh, use a, a steel flyball spacer gear for the um, for the governor out of an older motor. Um, John Deere realized that real quick. That was the only flaw with these 1987 models. Like I said, these were some of the best years of these 300 series, but um, the plastic flyball spacers were not a good move. And um, they replaced, they fixed that in the later years by going just going back to a metal one again. And, you know, it, it's like, I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but I, I have to pull the motor out, you know, take the flywheel cover off, pull the fly, uh, flywheel off, re replace the gear, put the flywheel back on, put it all back together. But luckily, I know people who can do that for me. And uh, very happy to have this tractor. Uh, I mean, besides those couple problems, she's a good hard worker. I didn't realize how many hours I'd be putting on this darn thing, but she... She works really good, and I have to actually go out and mow with it after I make these couple videos. I have another one I'm going to make next, separate. Um, but, you know, she works just about every day or so, and very forgiving machine, I have to say. And these, these things are tough. This thing will last me for a very long time. It only took me three years to find one, but I'm glad I finally got this one, because like I said before, I would never find another 300 series in this kind of condition, not only cosmetically restored, but mechanically sound uh, for the most part for the money I paid for 1400 bucks I really couldn't refuse that and it, it it's not just a you know 20 foot paint job it really looks nice very few flaws in the paint I mean I put some scratches in it from sitting on it and going through trees and stuff with it but the only flaw that this thing had on it in the paint was right here and I noticed that when I got it other than that the paint was absolutely perfect so 
take her up and down the driveway real quick. Sounds really nice, and the uh, the uh, the horizontal post winds run really smooth, which is great. One of the safety features of this is if, if you hit the brake pedal hard enough, it snaps it back into neutral. As you can see there. Try and show you the, the turning brakes. I mean, like I said, I would need two pedals to do this, like the 318 has, but um, that, that's a future upgrade that I'll probably look into putting on. But it does turn fairly sharp. And unlike most people, like I said, I actually do have the use for the turning brakes. Um, they actually do serve a purpose when I mow because I need the sharp turns. adjust the air gap on the PTO a little while ago because it wouldn't engage but I tightened the nuts a little bit and there you go the little light comes on and everything Sounds really good when you get it in high grass. Lower deck also had a new belt put on it. I did have to replace the PTO belt at one point because I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to set the tension, and uh, as a result of that, I broke the belt. So, but that was just a learning experience. The air squeals a little bit too, but that's pretty common. This thing goes fast and forward and reverse too, which is kind of neat. 